1981, he pulled off this win in Cincinnati against Clerk of Argentina. McEnroe's singles victories are unsurpassed in Davis Cup, and it is McEnroe who, along with Peter Fleming, has a 14-1 and one doubles record. He also played this six-hour marathon against Sweden's Matt Wielander. This is match point. It was a victory for McEnroe and the USA as well. McEnroe with tears of emotion. But since 1982, the Cup has not seen American shores. The 1989 team started out with a new young look. Michael Chang, just 16 at the time, played his first Davis Cup match against Paraguay's Victor Pecci. Watch his incredible speed. leads one match to love then Andre Agassi who is both a superb talent Robert Seguso closed things out for the USA and the US team is in the last eight against France again this weekend McEnroe is back to lead the US charge like he did the last time they played in Grenoble in 82 in the final Mac is the only man to have beaten Lendl this year he did it at the WCT finals in Dallas this is match point France in the second round of the Davis Cup coming up. Davis Cup it is the United States versus France it is also the second round and it will be from the San Diego Sports Arena live in San Diego California Yannick Noah in the first match tonight will play John McEnroe of the USA and then Henri Lacan of France will play Andre Agassi Hello to you everyone, I'm Cliff Drysdale and welcome to the first of three days of our coverage of the Davis Cup. It will all be live. The Davis Cup has played over five matches, best of five, so the first one to win three matches wins the whole thing. It happens also to be that the four players that will play singles are the four most charismatic players or among the four most charismatic players in the world. Sweden and Austria are in the semi-finals already, then Yugoslavia and Spain will play each other. In fact, the first rounds have already been played. The USA will play France. That's the match that you will see coming up in just a moment. And then Czechoslovakia and West Germany. With me today again, of course, is the fiery one, Fred Stolle. And Fred, having just seen what you saw there, how do you see this Davis Cup, the last eight? The U.S. is one of the last eight left in this competition. Well, I think the United States in with a pretty strong chance, Fred, but gets tougher, as we all know, each round. And, of course, you've got teams like Sweden, and you've got teams like Czechoslovakia, and, of course, West Germany, if they happen to get through France. But I think they've got a well-rounded team this year. Well, a lot of folks coming into this tie, Fred, said that, as far as they were concerned, anyway, this was an even ball game well i don't go along with that cliff i think they uh, premised that on the fact that yannick noah has been playing particularly well the last three weeks he's played a lot of five set matches and he's come out on top in a few of them uh, however uh, i the thing that the american boys john McEnroe, has not lost to either one of these players and the untold part there is the fact that andre agassi hasn't won too many five setters in his career but uh, i think the u.s got a pretty good shot at it Chris, how about this first match against uh, uh, France. You've got uh, John McEnroe, who, as you've already said, playing very well and uh, the only man to beat Lendl this year. And he's playing against Yannick Noe, who is also really in good form. Very confident John McEnroe at the moment. In practice, he's played well. And, uh, of course, after that big victory coming out of uh, Dallas over Ivan Lendl and um, uh, Yannick Noe, for him to win today, I think he has to serve at about 70, 75 percent and knock off those high volleys, be looking for high volleys. And I don't think he's going to get too many of them. The players are already warming up, as you can tell. Uh, you, of course, are a Davis Cup player yourself, Fred. You've done darn well. Another man who's done very well for the USA in Davis Cup is Roscoe Tanner. He's at courtside now. Roscoe, uh, how do you think that Tom Gorman, captain of the US Davis Cup team, feels that the draw came out for his team? Well, I think Cliff, he's got to be ecstatic. We've got John McEnroe leading off. He's undefeated, as you were saying, against Yannick Noah. 
He's confident. He's been playing extremely well in practice. He's hitting the ball harder than I've ever seen him hit it. Well, he's also playing on the exact court that he beat Yvonne Lendl on a few weeks ago. They flew this court in from Dallas, especially for this match. So I think we've got a very confident team. Everything is just right for the U.S. John McEnroe can set the tables so that Andre Agassi can come on confidently and win his match. I think it's perfect for us. Thanks a lot, Roscoe. You know, going in, as I said, a lot of people felt that this was an even call. Well, apparently, Fiery Fred thinks that we have a good chance, and so does Roscoe Tanner. France versus the USA in Davis Cup. ESPN presents the 1989 Davis Cup USA versus France. Today's tennis is brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. By Michelo, one taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelo. By Avia, the one line of athletic shoes really designed and engineered for athletic use all the way back. That question may be answered. Yannick Noah, he is in form, as you well know, if you've been watching us on ESPN along with him. McEnroe and Noah in a moment. Edberg over Anthony ah. of Austria, as you can see. The reason that he is playing, of course, is because Thomas Muster was hurt in that appalling accident during the Lipton tournament. Scott, though, beat Wielander, as you can see, in five sets. So that match is tied one apiece. Also played today, Ivan Izovic of Yugoslavia de defeating Kasal and then Zivojinovic beating Sanchez. So it looks like Yugoslavia, I suppose, Fred, you call that a surprise. That one's you? played in Yugoslavia, Cliff. I, I think Davis Cup played a home court advantage uh, playing in Yugoslavia, or even if that was played in Spain, that might have been the other way around. But they're too young. Ivan Izovic is a very, very promising youngster. He's only 17 years of age, and uh, along with Bobo Zivojinovic, they're going to be a tough team over there. You are looking at John McEnroe. Now, the umpire for tonight's match, Malcolm Huntington from Great Britain. The British boys are in charge of this particular thing. The head referee is George Grimes, a very experienced man. Malcolm Huntington and Dick Lum make up the two uh, chair umpires. Boris Becker beat Novacek in the West Germany Czechoslovakia tie and Milan Schreiber the Karluva Steve of West Germany so they are at one all and of course it is West Germany or Czechoslovakia that the USA will play in the next round of this Davis Cup competition the warm-ups are over McEnroe is waiting for some folks behind Noah to settle down and it looks like they are ready to play first ball in the air of this Davis Cup tie, the USA versus France, five matches. Each match, best of five sets. Captain of the US Davis Cup team is Tom Gorman. Pretty explosive start for Yannick Noah, teeing off on that backhand. Indoor surface, we mentioned, a carpet, Supreme Court. Yannick Noah's successes the last few weeks have been outdoors, and they've been played on asphalt-type surface. That was in Indian Wells, Newsweek event in Indian Wells, and then at the Lipton. <laughs> Tom Gorman, by the way, very pleased with his team. He says that he has never had a team with more talent to represent the USA. And of course, he's right. Two players in the higher reaches of the top ten in the world. Ah! Agassi number five, McEnroe number six. When you're looking at two players who play that well, Fred, and you've got a Davis Cup doubles duo that have been a successful as Fleck and Segusa, you're really working with some talent. Thanks ah! also, as far as doubles play is concerned, uh, Yannick Noah has yet to lose a Davis Cup match in doubles. 
So the doubles in this could be a pivotal match. We just have to wait and see. But both players, first set of a Davis Cup tie, have to be a little edgy, a little nervous. This is bread and butter McEnroe. A good swinging serve out to the backhand side and closes in very quickly. You see that stutter step and the racket out in front as he nails that backhand volley cross court for the winner. Yannick Noah is about as hyped up as I've ever seen him before a match. When he came walking on the court, he was really sky high. Here he's all over these balls and he hits a great back end. That's similar to the back end he hit on the first point. He's very deceptive with the ball. Game point, McEnroe. Interesting, Fred, I think that uh, when you talked to McEnroe, I guess it was yesterday or two days ago, I asked him about his game. He said that his serve is part of a whole series of things that makes his game so good when he's playing well. He says that he needs to serve well in order to volley well, to get that volley that he needs above the net. This is what John McEnroe was talking about. He needs that serve to try and get in and back up the volley. He doesn't need it this time if he serves that well. Game point. the ball off his feet uh, better than John McEnroe. He's had to do it twice in this game already. A little bit anxious on this approach shot. You saw he come down under the ball a little quickly to miss that backhand approach. So back to Juice. He believes the ball was just long. He, he thought it was just long. He looked straight over to his captain, Eric de Blicker. Blicker said he was doing it. He thought he was good. It's a tough part with a captain under, under the gun like that. You've either got to say no, <laughs> it was long, and then you're, then you're in trouble. You've got to try and help. Help you play her along. Say, no, I thought it was good. Give him a little more confidence in the referee. Well, a little trouble, but McEnroe has held on to serve. One game to love in the first set of this best of five set match. The first match of five that will decide it. McEnroe has won all three. The last meeting seven WCT finals the time they played before that was, was in 1982 where McEnroe beat Yannick Noah on an indoor clay court that was put up in Grenoble France and that in fact was the last time that the USA won the Davis Cup McEnroe puts that down Cliff as uh, his top three in the top three of his uh, joys of representing the United States Noah, the Lipton event, 
uh, where they had the machine that clocked the velocity of the serve. Got it up to 124, 125 miles an hour. Normally players will start off to get it up to bring it up at that speed, but that was a blistering first serve from Noah. First point of his serve. McEnroe's picked his game up a little. He's not feeling for the shots now. He gets over there. Good racket preparation here, and he goes for the shot. In isolation there. Look at that racket preparation. He's set, and then he steps onto that front foot. The body weight goes forward, out towards the target. Beautiful execution. It all depends, doesn't it, Fred, on how well Noah serves. And I guess as much as we have seen of Janet Noah, as you watch this replay, he's going to serve well. Well, he has been serving particularly well the last three or four tournaments. Doesn't put this one away, though. Gives McEnroe a second chance, but 30-50. French team or the US team, I'll tell you that Davis Cup is something special. When you hear that call, game France, game United States, it means a lot more than the individual calls of game to Noah or game to McEnroe. And Noah said he has to behave himself a little bit more playing Davis Cup because he can't really uh, clown around and, and entertain the public the way he normally does playing for himself. Game point and game first game of the match to France. One game all in the first set. Remember, it was West Germany that took the U.S. out of the major leagues, as, as uh, McEnroe calls them, of the Davis Cup. That was two years ago in Hartford, Connecticut. A tremendous match between the two nations. And then the U.S. was forced last year to play what McEnroe called the minor league of the Davis Cup. And I think that's a fair assessment. Beat Peru and then Argentina this year. We're back in the real thing. First round of the Davis Cup, the USA over Paraguay. This is the second round. There are eight teams left. turn here from Yannick Noah. He just chips this one and uh, gets it in the right spot to make McEnroe play that half volley. McEnroe really has to anticipate. has to move for the cross court. Noah just holds it back and goes back behind his opponent. I think you'll find Yannick Noah try and mix up the returns but he likes to block the return off the forehand occasionally and uh, then that slice backhand and then also he liked to rip that backhand like he did We'll try to rip it like he did on that occasion. John McEnroe was asking for all the balls to be brought down to the servers, and he wanted to so that the balls are ready to get the let, but if he's ready for the next point to get some momentum, the balls will be ready. We watch Yannick Noah over the first couple of games that John's been serving, he seems to be leaning towards the backhand. He's ready for that backhand return at all times. He's trying to take that serve away from John. Out. Roscoe, you're a lefty with uh, one of the biggest serves in the business, but don't uh, lefties normally like to go to the right-handers. It's a natural swing for them, natural serve for the right-handers backhand. It is, and one of the biggest things to develop through the match is to be able to serve that wide one in the deuce court that's to the forehand. John likes to set up his whole game by serving that wide serve, then you start leaning and camping out there, and he serves the, the ace down the center or the ace out wide in the deuce court. So if he's able to get those serves in early, then he's going to keep them confused. John was just asking him not to use flash cameras. Back 
always mean flash cameras in an indoor stadium like this because the flash, I think, goes, it throws for about 18 feet and they're up 20, 25 rows up. It doesn't go anywhere. They don't get a better shot of the players. 40-15, game point McEnroe. in the first set of this match. We'll be back. This is what John McEnroe talks about when he needs all the ingredients in the game. There's the big first serve uh, thrown forward, the stutter step, and he plays a very deft half volley. A lot of touch, but watch what happens now. He moves in because Noah had to chase that one move forward. McEnroe moves forward and knocked that volley off. Great play. Seems Two games to one, no breaks have served yet. Thank you. Two matches will be played today, this one, and then the reverse singles, La Cant, play against Andre Agassi. That serve sounds like an absolute cannon when you're down here by the court. Well, he did this against Miroslav Mochi a couple of weeks ago in the Newsweek tournament at Indian Wells, and... Uh, had two sets to love, served 18 aces in the first three sets, and then uh, just got a little weary. And the year went on to win it in five. But those five setters really have to help Yannick Noah get in shape. He's a great athlete, got a very smooth motion on the serve, and relies on it heavily. As we've been talking about five five setters in his last two tournaments. He's won three of them and lost a couple of them. to Miloslav Machir at Indian Wells. Noah likes to set up and play a lot of drop volleys here off that first volley. And McEnroe, because he's down 30, love, rips this one. If that had been a, a tight point, as we see his wife Tatum watching on there, if that had been a little tighter point, I think he'd have pushed that one down the line rather than rip it straight at his opponent. conference quoted in the paper this morning actually said that he had to win this match in order for France to beat the United States or in order for them to have a chance to beat the United States. Two five setters that Yannick Noah lost were to Machia. You saw that match here on ESPN, the final of Indian Wells, and then also you saw the match where he lost to Thomas Muster in the semi-finals at the Lipton. Yes, and then the appalling accident, Thomas Muster involved in a car accident after the match was played at midnight that night. The match finished at about 11 o'clock. About an hour later, he was involved in an accident and to have knee surgery. And will be out for about eight months to a year. But I asked Noah yesterday about whether he thought that the fact that he played so many five set matches hurt or helped him for the Davis Cup and he said frankly I think it, it's going to help me I'm not tired or at least I was but I've had four days off now and I'm eager again basically what Noah has done since he's been in San Diego is not practiced a lot it's just a matter of getting used to the bounce of this indoor surface as opposed to the outdoor courts he's been playing on for the last three weeks or months pays the penalty here because he had the open court and look at that he pushed it down the middle and it was still uh, on the full and Noah does the right thing when he gets that ball over McEnroe's head just instinctively comes to the net himself and that puts McEnroe under pressure to try and go for the winner from a tough position
That's pretty close, one because Noah, looking over his captain, just puts two fingers up as though to say, well, that's two mistakes that you guys have made here, and there's been no overrule. And uh, John McEnroe hit this off forehand. Very difficult for us to see from this position, but uh, pretty close one. No, I would like a call, as you said, Fred, but didn't get one. Eric Deplica actually got out of his chair for a moment, but didn't make a protest. This was an excellent lob from Yannick Noah. You look at the position that McEnroe finds himself in here. He's back and stretching over and gets the angle on that overhead for the winner. And Noah was at full stretch after that one, but the angle beat him. Game point for the USA. so far and France trails the USA three games to two in the first set of this best of five. Okay. Here's the serve comparison. It is Yannick Noah on the left hand side of your screen. On the right hand side you see John McEnroe. Take a look at the difference in their actions. It's a beautiful serve action there from Yannick Noah, isn't it? On the other hand, take a look at how there is more shoulder turn here in McEnroe's serve, and he is further into the court, actually, which is one of the reasons he is so successful on the serve. He gets into the net very quickly. Nevertheless, it is Yannick Noah's big first serve that is going to make the difference between his opportunity to win or lose this match. It is three games to two in the first set for the USA. Both Yannick Noah and Eric Debliker questioned that call just a minute ago, but Malcolm Huntington in the chair indicated that he thought the ball was good on that one, and also on the other call on the other side, he thought that he was, it was too close for him to overrule. So Yannick Noah is losing confidence a little bit right now in Mr. Huntington. players actually sitting in the box right next to me cliff and indicated that they feel like there's four bad calls already in this match mm, what do you think roscoe you're closer to it than us could you tell in any of those they've all looked very close to me uh, i think so far that i couldn't have changed any one of the calls good look at the team the french team there that's where roscoe tanner is at courtside just in front of those fellows side crossing interest in what's going on, don't they? Because if uh, their man wins this thing, it makes a big difference to their chances. You said Yannick Noah would have to serve very well and get some high volleys. This time he gets a low volley, but watch how close he closes in and just tags this forehand volley there, right on top of the net, and he anticipated that one very well. Thirty love. Noah not threatened at all so far on serve. His opening serve was just a loss of a point. And his next service came to love and 30 love here. Tiebreakers are no longer a part of, uh, or should I say they are a part of Davis Cup now after a history of playing them out and until we get, of course, to the fifth set of a match and then they play it out until 
they serve is broken one way or the other. The crowd here is, of course, it's as close to full as doesn't matter. The, what empty seats they are, are there, of course, because, well, here in California, it is just after 5 o'clock, make it 5, 8 in the afternoon. bouncing so high it's very difficult for John to get the ball down on the return so he keeps even though it's second serves at different times the ball's up over his shoulders when he's going to get that return and Yannick Noah comes in and makes a great volley a lot of players uh, Roscoe would like to have that second serve as a first serve and it moves through the air pretty quickly and as you mentioned jumps up so McEnroe not with his timing yet on the return of serve and Noah three service games has only lost one point on serve Just serve three games off for a set 15 low. No break points even as yet. As, uh, John McEnroe had a long service game in the opening game of the match, but I mentioned for the first few games, these fellows have got a few butterflies in the stomach, a little nervous. Now they're starting to settle down. serve was set up by John serving out wide so many times that Yannick was reaching out for the back end and for the back end just a fraction of a second behind so that when John goes up the middle it's far more effective. John's been talking to himself a little bit the last couple of points because he feels there was a couple of points on Yannick's serve where he took it a little bit casual. So he's trying to fire himself up make himself concentrate all the time. Uh, percentages so far in the match. They will get better, both of them. <laughs> Indoor surface, there's no reason why they should stay that low. The only match knows, as you already talked about, Fred. that John McEnroe serve up the middle on the point before and serve a few balls to Yannick's forehand made him stop thinking about that back end. Then all of a sudden when he comes back to the back end, it's effective again. So that's what you got to do. You got to keep mixing it up and that's what John's doing. If he sees Yannick hit a great back end return, next time maybe he'll let him try to hit a forehand. Game point. Also the excessive grip change that uh, Yannick Noah has to make if he's going to drive that back end around to the f and then he's got to make the grip change to the forehand long way to go the usa and france in this quarterfinal davis cup match are on serve it is 4-3 in the first set we'll be back States has won this Davis Cup competition 28 times. Australia just behind them, Great Britain. Um, they've done pretty well, but that was a long time ago. The French won it. Also, most of their victories came in the early days of the Davis Cup. Sweden, all of their victories has, have, of course, come lately. West Germany won it last year for the very first time and in a surprise final match over Sweden. Paul Uwe Stiebe beat Mats Wielander. And of course, Boris Becker won his match, so it was Germany versus, or I should say, winning over Sweden in last year's final. Noah serving on serve three, four, first set. Waiting for the crowds to sit down. On that last changeover, John McEnroe took three or four rackets uh, out of his 
bag and just test the tension on the strings. I think he's looking for something that might be a little tighter that he can uh, try and get hold of this Noah serve with. Yanning Noah is concerned about the calls. After he's seen a couple of close calls in the match, sometimes you wonder about every one of them. This is vintage McEnroe. Look how far he was inside that baseline as he met that backhand. No, no chance to get it because it was hit with pinpoint accuracy. Now the crowd, this is what McEnroe wanted, was the crowd to get involved. Play seats over 12,000 and it is as close to full as doesn't matter right now. And as we said, it is just, let's see, 516 local time. Yannick Noah was foot folded on that first serve, even though it hit the tape. And this was a problem with him last week, if you remember, Cliff. If you watched any of our telecasts, Noah had a, a bit of a problem last week with some foot faults. So the door opens for the United States. Love 30. So John McEnroe's found the right racket. He's got a choice of about three shots here, and Noah closes in for the one down the line, and he just, with the wheels he's got, he can't even get back there for that one. Three break points for McEnroe to serve for the first set. He could almost gone anyway, couldn't he? Yeah, remember that point because that was the first opportunity that McEnroe had on the break of serve. He set it up beautifully and had Yannick Noah totally at sea and off balance. Little smile from him. I think he enjoyed the attempt anyway. <laughs> Two more break points. Dangerous though because Noah could come through with two biggies. this for a return. Look how early he meets that backhand out of front. He knows it's a winner. Look at that reaction. So McEnroe has the first break of serve in this Davis Cup tie between the USA and France to go to the semi-final of the competition for 89. And he'll serve for the first set. <laughs> Roscoe Tanner is at courtside, and Roscoe, you you had a celebrated big serve. I, I, I want to say this, that I feel that McEnroe serves his left-handed serve into the forehand side of the right-hander as well as anybody in the sport, really in the history of the sport. Oh, his serve is one of the most deceptive in the game, too. He has such a wide swing. The, the variety, how far out wide you have to go. Look at that. Noah's outside the alley trying to get that ball back. How do you cover that and the one down the middle at the same time? It's, it's an incredible serve, and, and the thing that's so great about his serve is he backs it up so well with the volleys. Watch this. The ball's way out wide. He comes in fast. He's way inside the service line. Makes that a very simple volley. 30 love, two points from the first set. is textbook stuff on the serve. I mean, he's putting, here he is serving for the set right after the break. The one thing you definitely want to do is get first serves in. Look what he's doing. He's putting them right in the corners. Perfect game. First 
set to the USA. Deliberate does it for both these fellows. Look at McEnroe, deliberate, slow, back to the net, and then he has to twist around. But look how he follows it up, gets in there. This was a fine serve. This was the breaking one, so it was a relatively easy volley there. And Yannick now pretty much the same, but he gets a good first serve in here. A three-quarter pace, and McEnroe hits a great return, but Noah's still inside that service line, and he has a much tougher volley because McEnroe had a little bit better return off that one. But both players, that exemplifies the serve and volley routine. First set to McEnroe, 6-3. On the uh, changeover, we could hear Yannick Noah expressing his disgust to his captain there. But he was absolutely disgusted. You're right. He was furious. He threw his racket down, uh, and he's yelling at his captain that, come on, come on, these balls, they're, you know, they're, they're out. So, so he's, he's looking totally for Deblica to get up and give him some support. Is that right, what you're saying? Right. He's totally frustrated with the lines calls right now. He feels like he was robbed in the first set. There were a couple of close ones, weren't there, Roscoe? You could hardly, could hardly say he was robbed because they weren't really obvious calls that, as you said, you felt should be overruled anyway. I think he's just looking for Deblica to get up and give him some support mm -hmm. to say to the umpire, hey, I'm not letting you guys get up. I just want to uh, voice my disapproval with this. And Yannick Noah needs some support from his captain on the sideline. Mm -hmm. What really cost him in that last game was that he started missing first serves. And then finally at 15.40, he had to put a first serve in and Mac just picked it. gets his good low return and then all of a sudden when Yannick tries to get in close that's a tough ball to get over too he's a big guy and he can jump way up in the air but Max playing perfectly nice shot of Tatum there his wife along with USDA president David Markham straight into the body and McEnroe gets a little lucky with the net there because Noah just has to poke it up and McEnroe drives this straight at Noah. Noah expected that though. McEnroe did apologize for the fact but this is what you got to do. Look, Noah can't do anything with this except hopefully just poke it back up there and uh, he's uh, not in a very good spot there as he hits the deck. Big point. Stats from the first set. Percentages there. The big one is the winners. And unforced errors that Noah's made and the winners that McEnroe has hit. A lot of those off the return of serve. Three of them in one game. Biggest one, service broken, Noah once. McEnroe and the USA lead one set to love. broke Noah the last time Noah served had 15-30 in this game and then that passing shot but Noah has held on at his game point Noah is really rocketing first serves. He's starting to press a little on that first serve. Trying to go for a little bit too much on that first serve. And as Roscoe has alluded to the fact, he started to miss a few first serves in his last service game. And uh, really has been going for a lot on that second serve. So inevitably a double fall has to creep in. Eric Deblick are not happy with that turn of events. This is Deuce, first game, second set. 
again a missed first serve. He's really not mixing his serve up enough. He needs to try to go to both corners instead of just trying to get better and better serves to the backhand. He left it and it went just, but just long. Game point for Noah. The last time that you saw Stefan Edberg play, along with us anyway, was in Australia. Let's watch this replay. Good pick up there from Yannick Noah. He's got to close in again, but McEnroe misses a golden opportunity on this one. You can see he's disappointed. Edberg played in the Davis Cup earlier today for Sweden. He won his match against Austria. He came back earlier than that. He played the final in Scottsdale, losing to Lendl easily. So he's in good condition at least. I remember seeing him have to withdraw after that dramatic match with Pat Cash down there at Flinders Park. You know. Deuce again. Well, it's returns like that that make you go for that second serve that puts pressure on that second serve because the next time Yannick Noah gets up there he figures well I've got to do a little more with my second serve he can't hit second serves much better than that it's been a long game it's games like this that very often will turn a match around one way or the other first game second set exactly what happened. He knew that McEnroe had tagged that forehand to point before and went again for a bit extra on the second serve. So it's a big point for the United States coming up. Serve here in the second set. Love. John McEnroe, he has his passing shot to get this early break here in the second set. He's happy with what he did, and of course, so his wife Tatum sitting next to the new USDA president, David Martin. <laughs> She's an unashamed supporter of her husband, and of course the USA as you can see and why not indeed. One game to love McEnroe second set. Six games to three for him first set and he will serve. Quick turn of events Fred wasn't it? I mean one, at one point we're just going along holding on to serve and then suddenly two breaks. Quick ones. and you know in matches played this year when he's won the first set so that's good news for his teammates fine serve there into the body and that uh, jam Yannick Noah he just did not have room to drive that return hasn't lost that, that many matches this year McEnroe as a matter of fact in Australia he lost to Lendl, of course, in the quarterfinals. And Milan, Becker beating in the semifinals. Yeah. Terrific stuff. Well, we talk about fitness and serving and bowling. Look where McEnroe gets to make this volley. He's got to charge this one, and great touch on that angle backhand volley. Right in on top of the end of the racket out in front. Just cups it back, gets the angle. Fifteen, and of course, it's a tough thing to do after you've just won a set and then established an early service break in the second set is to consolidate that position to hold here. And of course, Yannick Noah knows that he must try and break back right now. Semis, he went to Lyon, France. 
beat Mitachevsky, Bergstrom of Sweden, Steve, who's beaten twice this year, Svensson and Hlasek in the final. We've seen Hlasek play as a heck of a player, but he didn't drop a set, and then he won the WCT finals, beating, among others, Lindel. stuff from McEnroe. I'm not sure, Fred, that when you put this first set together in the early stages of the second that he's ever played better. Well, uh, that's the second volley. Look at this. He's got two and he stretches again. Great athleticism by both players there and Yannick Noah looks at him as to say, well, how did you do that? And John McEnroe is pumped up. How does it feel down there, Roscoe? You're even closer to it than us. I'll tell you, as John walked away after turning his back on, on Yannick, Yannick had had to smile. He's going, what can I do now? It's unbelievable, but one of the things that you're really seeing John McEnroe do is vary his serve. He's hitting the ball corner to corner, into the body, in the uh, Yannick, but he doesn't have, know where to go next. McEnroe drives this one down the line. In days gone by, he would have argued the point about that one, maybe. Today, asked the question, was told no, and moved to the other side of the court. 15 low. Second serve foot court there from Yannick Noah, if I heard correctly, I did. Yes. His captain, Eric de Blicker, is asking what should, what exactly, how did he football? Well, the answer is pretty obvious, isn't he? Stepped on the line. You do that, you're going to get football. As Fred said, he did uh, football a couple of times at the Lipton. So. Can't tell here, but he gets very close to the line with that front foot because a uh, beautiful stretch up to there. But... Double fold it is, 15 all. This really has to frustrate Noah at the moment. Here is how close he is to the line. Watch this. Little step. McEnroe play some this year. You're watching him at close quarters tonight. Do you think, in view of what you've already seen, that he can really come all the way back? That's the question so many people ask. I'd say if he keeps playing the way he's playing tonight, he is back. <laughs> he's not missing a ball. I think he's he's all over the court. He's not willing to concede anything. As you saw, that ball way away from him. He still tried to make an effort to run it down. So I think if he keeps playing this way, he is back. We've got to give Yannick Noah credit. He's come up with a couple of big serves after being foot folded. Showing his disgust at that. But he's playing for France and it's on the line. Game point. Vintage McEnroe, he stepped in, got that return early, but look at the court coverage from both players here. They've, they've run a good 40 or 50 yards in that point alone from side to side. Game point.
technique just keeps going for better and better serves and harder and harder. He got that one on the line, so he has opened his score here in the second set. But the USA leads it a set and a break. Before this whole thing started, Fred Roscoe and I sat down and took a look at what we thought would be the winning edge. The serve we gave to Yannick Noah. The net game, clearly we gave to John McEnroe. Ground strokes, well, we felt Mac was a little bit ahead there. That might surprise some of you. I was a little hesitant on that one. Serve return also to McEnroe, but a very close call. Tactics and fitness, we could not decide between the two because Noah's played so many matches. What do you think, Fred? You had some thoughts on that? I think the serve return is what's happened in the, in the first set uh, because now Noah is starting to press on the serve, going for too much, as Roscoe said, trying to blister things down. But if he doesn't get that first serve in, it's been the McEnroe return that has beaten him. And that's why McEnroe is up a set and a break. What do you think, Roscoe? Well, I think one of the big advantages that John's done is he's buried his serve. He's served to both corners. He's served into the body. And Yannick Noah is only trying to serve to one place, but harder and harder and harder. So he's not getting the variety on his shots, and as a result, John's beginning to camp on spots and being a, making great returns for it. He can start to pick the serve. But we see how John gets in so close to the net behind his shots. That's what makes his game so effective. He's right on top of the net, every ball. That's why we gave him the winning edge in the volleys as we look to tap Captain Tom Gorman. He must be pretty happy with proceedings at this stage of the day. Fifteen low. See, every time John sees Yannick start to look like he's ready for a backhand, then it's going to be into the body or a forehand. It's like a baseball pitcher going to a batter. City crowd here enjoying this match and Yannick Noah really has to get back on track break serve to get himself back in here McEnroe hit that one right on the throat of the racket and Noah moves in to drive that volley here's a little more topspin on that round arm volley as does John McEnroe more than John McEnroe that one fell in so quick he makes that shot look simple because he's right on top of the net but that's because his hands are so fast and he hit that ball awfully hard most players wouldn't even get their racket there watch this point very carefully it could be a turning point if Noah wins it he'll have two break points to get back even here in the second set Macano needs to keep his nose out front look at that <laughs> Roscoe, you have said he disguises it so well. Roscoe was talking about this motion. As we look at it, it goes down the tee to the forehand. He'd been serving it out wide to the backhand. Saw Noah move out there, change the pattern. Two points ago, he was in trouble. Now he has game point. McEnroe's got four, Noah only one, and I don't know who would have bet on that going into this match because you've seen Noah play along with us so many great matches in which he has served so well in these last few weeks. Make that five for McEnroe and give him a 3-1 lead now in the second set. He won the first set 6-3. Good look at the shoulder rotation here from McEnroe as he chains up. You can see Noah leaning over to the backhand there and uh, because he didn't believe McEnroe would go down the tee again. So that's two aces in a row right in the same spot. Just can't pick his serve, can you? And as goes his serve, so goes his game. It's his serve that he's picked up this year and that's why he's playing so darn well. Yeah. 
see, that first serve was a great serve. He had a cannon, but it's right where John's expecting it to be. And if you serve it where one of these great players is expecting it, they're going to get it back. He's got to start fooling him. He's got to start out thinking him on his serve. John's wife, Tatum, and the U.S. team are both enjoying what they're seeing. Love 15. WCT finals in Dallas. McEnroe beat Agassi after Agassi withdrew after he. Agassi won the first set. Mac was leading three love and Agassi said, uh, I had enough. He was injured. Then he beat Lindell in a marvelous match and Brad Gilbert in straight sets in the final. serve just didn't get out wide enough and uh, John McEnroe was just waiting for that one with the position of this serve he gets it there but McEnroe just takes one step and leans on that one gets the racket out in front just guides it down the line and I think that's where he's improved as well as the serve that's the return of serve from McEnroe that is back he's hitting that return not just trying to guide it he's nailing it see Ken Flack on the left of your screen and Robert Seguso tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time in what may be a pivotal doubles match. They will play against Noah and Leconte or will they? That's who the French have named but they can change that team up to an hour before the match. Guy Forget who has been such a fine doubles player for them for so long may well play depending on how long these matches go and whether Noah and or Leconte need a break. And also Guy Forget at the moment has uh, tendonitis in his knee causing some pain. Good volley from Yannick Noah there because it was a fine return from the McEnroe racket. Yannick has hit four out of the five serves that he's attempted in this game. First serves that he's attempted to the backhand. Game point. Are still behind a break here in the second set, and by one set to low. It's so important to John McEnroe's game. He served so well tonight. We asked him about it just two days ago, and here's what he said. If it's not there, uh, it's getting there very quickly, and uh, I hope that it's going to be even better than it was. You know, I feel like uh, there's room for improvement, but. You know, my serve isn't just my serve like Becker. My serve is a combination of quickness, volleying, and, and, and angles. It's not overpowering uh, serve like uh, the one Becker uses or the one that, uh, you know, Tanner used to hit or... This is the second set of this match, three games to two for USA and McEnroe serving. John McEnroe mentioned Roscoe Tanner's serve there, and of course both John and Roscoe were teammates. Davis Cup play a few years ago. Cincinnati, in fact, when the U.S. won that final great match, and Roscoe was telling me a story about <laughs> waiting in the locker room, which I want you to repeat after this point, Roscoe. 15 love, 3-2 McEnroe. John was one of the best teammates I ever had in Davis Cup and I played with a bunch of the different number one players in the world but he was more helpful to me than any other player in terms of he'd come to my come to practice with me work with me on different things and then when I was on the court he was right there cheering for me I really appreciated it Love, Roscoe was 
sitting in the locker room waiting to play the fifth and final match, what would have been the fifth and final deciding match against Guillermo Vilas, actually. But McEnroe is out there against Jose Luis Clerk. They played five sets. McEnroe won it, and I know you feel pretty good about that, Roscoe. I'll tell you what, I was absolutely exhausted. I hadn't hit one ball, but I was already getting cramps. <laughs> 40 though. McEnroe holds on to serve easily again. Noah must wonder what the heck he can do to make any kind of an impression on McEnroe's serve. And it is four games to two. It's the first serve percentages when McEnroe gets that first serve in. He's won 82%. Hasn't done too badly on second serves either. So that's tough for Yannick Noah to do anything on the McEnroe serve with statistics like that. John McEnroe, if you talk to the boys on the U.S. team today, they'll say that uh, he's in it. He's a team man. Loves Davis Cup competition. Won more matches than any other player playing for the United States. Singles and doubles. Been on the Davis Cup team, I think, nine years. Terrific performer. After that point just then, John was kicking himself a little bit, saying, come on, come on, you know, he's got a big lead here, but don't let down, because anything can happen. And we've seen Yannick Noah make some pretty good comebacks in the last few weeks in five set matches. Just needs that little break to get back, and he's in there. He's a veteran of Davis Cup play as well. Bringing out the best in our tennis. Oh. So, sorry. He's also an emotional player. Once he gets his emotions going, he's like that Frenchman. He gets, gets the blood boiling and gets firing on all cylinders. Again, though, he hasn't got the rhythm on the serve that he's had outdoors, and... Uh, Third four double faults, Rick. Another double fault creeping in there. sponsored more professional tournaments than... The most Davis Cup wins, John McEnroe, you see, has 52. Sachs follows him. Stan Smith has 34. Wilmer Allison from the Austin, Texas area, and Bill Tilden. I remember in the days that they played, of course, the Davis Cup format was not quite like what it is now, so the players played fewer matches. If you won the Davis Cup, well, you got into what they called the challenge round, and every other country played against each other for the right to play the champion nation or to challenge the champion nation. That's no longer true. Everybody goes into the hat now every year. Much better system now. I think much fairer system because when uh, Australia dominated with the Davis Cup, we sat back there and waited for the nations to fight with one another and uh, and come down to Australia and practice on grass for two weeks and play us. And we've been there for two and a half months. Twenty-nine. John McEnroe, the match so far, 12 for Noah. It's made a big difference. Yeah. 
six aces. US flag flying there. That's what John McEnroe wanted. He wanted some cheers from the crowd. Doesn't like bells and whistles, he said, but uh, he wants the folks to let them know that they're there. point this because it's a fine return and the Yannick Noah stepped down. You see where McEnroe played that from? One of the very few he's got behind that baseline, but a firm wrist and he played that one back behind his incoming opponent. Oh, that's beautiful to watch. Another easy serve game for McEnroe. The U.S. is out front by five games to three. McEnroe, well, he's been behind a couple of break points, but not many in this match. Awesome display of serving. Omar Farid, the captain, I should say the doctor of the USA Davis Cup team. He's been around ever since I have been around US Davis Cup tennis. He's one of the world's most delightful people, and boy, the players will have him around for as long as he wants to be the doctor of the team. No assuming to try to stay in the second set. This is Tom Gorman, the captain of the American team. Looks pretty relaxed there. No, I think Tom always looks relaxed, though. I've never seen him look particularly nervous. And Noah trying just to keep the ball low. There off that aggressive return from McEnroe. You know, even though Yannick won that point, John is standing way outside the alley to get that ball. There you can see Yannick Noah moving in tight to hit that volley. He gets that by hitting a great serve, but he's got to hit such a good serve. No wonder he's missing some of them. He ought to try a few of them into the forehand just to keep John honest. There he goes. When he does it, he gets a missed return. McEnroe not too happy with the call. He's having a bit of a laugh. That's the same lines person that uh, Yannick Noah has asked some questions to. Roman started out in 86 against Ecuador, a match that we won, lost to Australia that year, so he's been the Davis Cup captain for four years. Game point. Almost a don't care shot, it looked like from here. Well, he likes to play that shot, though, put that drop volley off the uh, return of serve, but I agree, he's got to concentrate on doing something on the serve that's going to make John McEnroe worry about the return because at the moment McEnroe is all over the return so just wide and Yannick Noah has held on to sir when we come back McEnroe will serve to win the 2 o'clock in the morning, that's 2 a.m. in Paris. As we will remind you that Henri Lacant and Andre Agassi will be coming up next, the second of the five matches that it takes in Davis Cup. And this telecast is going live, of course, to France. I'm Cliff Drysdale, along with Fred Stolly, Roscoe Tanner's at courtside. You're watching the first match of the best of five set series, five match series, rather, of the Davis Cup USA versus France. You're looking on live the San Diego Sports Arena. McEnroe's playing Yannick Noah. He won the first set 
And he is serving for the second. Brilliant forehand volley right off the shoelace and then deep. And Yannick Noah is good an athlete as he is. Look at the court coverage from Noah. Chases that one with McEnroe in full control at the moment. there only lost two points on serve in this set did pretty well in the first set as well just that first service game it was a long one a couple of juices that gives him set point three of them to go ahead by two sets to love and you know it looks at this point as if you can't imagine what could turn this thing around mechanically anyway for Yannick Noah the reaction of the American team surrounding Gordon Jorgensen who is the Davis Cup chairman former president of the USTA they're a happy group and understandably they said not that group but a lot of people who were looking at this Davis Cup competition as a whole and said the closest match would be between the USA and France a tough one to call it has not been that way so far in this match McEnroe easily with the first two sets 6-3, 6-4. First game, third set. Just to give you an idea of how McEnroe has dominated on the serve, I keep the score uh, throughout these matches, and just by my unofficial scorecard here, I have McEnroe losing six points on serve in the first set, and only three points on serve in the second set. Hmm. Speaks volumes, doesn't it? Most of those points that he lost on his serve in the first set were in the first game. Three of them. interesting how things turn around in the fortunes of a nation in the Davis Cup isn't it Roscoe it was just two years ago that we were saying where are our players going to come from that are going to not only do well in the Davis Cup but get us back into the world group well not only are we in the world group but there's some serious talk about the fact that the USA could win it all well, we're certainly looking awfully strong A lot of tough ones ahead, though. There's some great nations still in there, but this is the best, the best rounded team I think they've put together for a number of years. It's a doubles team that has yet to lose the Davis Cup match, and then you've got a man like McEnroe has the best overall record in Davis Cup, and then the new boy on the block, Andre Agassi, and he's won five singles matches only played five has yet to lose a match in Davis Cup competition so all bodes well Clip, there you see it every second serve is to the back end by the time uh, Yannick Noah gets ready to hit the ball, John McEnroe's already stepped into it. Look, he's already in the court with the racket back before Yannick even hits the ball. He's got to start burying his serve a lot more. Here he is, he's in, his racket's back, and now the ball's coming. No wonder he's hitting great returns. I think he's so frustrated at the moment, Noah that is, that uh, he's just not thinking about what he's doing on second serves. He just knows he's getting clobbered on second serve. <laughs> Break point. There it is. John McEnroe of the USA have won the first two sets and have an early break in the third. 
The USA and France. John McEnroe had a chance, well, we had a chance to talk to him about what it's like playing at home. That's what he said. Well, it's, it's a different role I have now. The underdog role is something that uh, the first 10 years of my career, uh, I, I was always at the, the top couple of players, and uh, I, not only because of that, because of the way I acted at times, uh, caused people to, to be against me, and uh, to have this happen at this stage is just, it's like heaven sent in a way. It's really nice to be able to have that type of support now. So he says the crowd supports him now and he likes it. <laughs> Over 12,000 people in attendance tonight. This place is jammed and it will be that way for the next three days. Five o'clock Eastern time tomorrow, live coverage of the doubles and then the reverse singles at 4.30 on Sunday afternoon. Live from the San Diego Sports Arena. Davis Cup quarterfinal match the USA. McEnroe playing for the USA. And Noah for France. There's a clip, there's a door open in the back that's uh, through one of the portals. Sun, sun is shining through and it's bothering Yannick Noah. So he's telling them to please close the door again underneath section 20A. Despondent French captain there, Eric Deblicker, fine player himself, represented his country. Yannick Noah at this point is doing anything he can to break the rhythm, even lob returns. He's figuring, you know, I'll just use my athletic ability to run the ball down, but he feels like he's got to do something and he's not quite sure what it is. He's very frustrated. to see now what John McEnroe does because uh, Yannick Noah has looked for that backhand serve now. Let's see if he changes his pattern. He tried. Good call. Deuce. Just wide. To pass Makeda because he gets so close to the net. And be assured that if he gets his racket on it, chances are very good that he's going to win the point on the volley. And players who play against him are very aware of that. Not going to get any better opportunity than Yannick Noah had then, though, because he struck a good backhand return, got the shot that he wanted for the passing shot, just missed on the forehand, skewed the forehand. So it's game point. For two games to love in the second set. Third set. Two sets of love for me. That 
big serve down into the forehand again. And McEnroe holds on. That's the second set statistics and two very important things to look at there. Look at the winners. At 21 to 4. But have a look at that first serve percentage. 49% for Noah. We mentioned at the start that for Noah to have any chance in this match, he'd have to be up where McEnroe is around 74% in order to get some decent volleys. And he has not been able to do that. Next match tonight, live here on ESPN, Henri Lacarte of France will play against Andre Agassi of the USA. Needless to say, that will also be a pivotal match if Lacarte can beat Agassi. And He'll give, put his team back even, provided McEnroe wins this, which it looks surely that he would be able to do. I'll be honest with you, I never thought that McEnroe was going to be able to play tennis of this quality after he took that layoff and came back, lost some confidence. I knew the game was there, but I wasn't sure that the desire was, and clearly it is, and I'm just astounded and really pleased by the way that he's been able to come back. Terrific stuff. And it is not like in the days when McEnroe played and he was the number one player for so long, players would as you watch this replay they'd say well yeah, we're playing against McEnroe we can you know we're going to lose this thing anyway they really try against him as you see that shot from Yannick Noah so he's got to win his matches now Whoa! others don't lose to him one is though that he is winning for Noah, but you get a chance to see the terrific touch of McEnroe again. Gets himself to the net again. He's so confident, with good reason. Doesn't confidence play a big part in this sport, though? Mm -hmm. We asked McEnroe about that. And why he has not played for months since he won the WCT event over Yvonne Lendl. He said, well, my body was uh, just a little weary, my back was a little sore, so I took a few days off and had some massages as Eric Deblicker looks on and Yannick Noah missed that forehand volley. Deuce. And McEnroe felt that he just needed to practice here. Confidence was there. He was playing well. point for McEnroe to go ahead by three games to love representing two surf breaks here in the third set. So if he converts one of the next, or this point rather, that should do it for him. McEnroe's had four break point opportunities converted on three of them. over the years in Davis Cup. They show up for Davis Cup matches. They don't go to every tournament that he plays by any means, but 
They feel very close to Davis Cup, and as McEnroe himself said, it was what we used to talk about before I even knew I was going to be a professional player. We talked about becoming a Davis Cup player, and he is. And he's serving at three games to love, two set to love lead. to do much with the return and that's just frustration personified on that young fellow's face right there he's played so well coming into this davis cup tie just doesn't have the answers today though and you can see mcenroe smells victory here That point was just typical of exactly why John McEnroe was so tough. And then Ignor finally picked a serve and was over kind of in the area to get it back. And John's right on top of it for a put the volley away. Just makes it so difficult. Another ace for McEnroe. A seven on him. You know, Yannick Noah was so confused by that one, he even was still stepping to the backhand after the ball had passed him on the forehand side. That's how well John's met, mixed it up in this match. Game point. That's exactly what John McEnroe's mentioned when we had something. Not only was it his serve, it was his movement to the net. And he talked about angles. And that was it right there, right on top of the net. He didn't hit that volley deep because he knows that his opponent, the Yank Noah, has got good foot speed. He can run that one down. He angles it away inside that service line, around that service line area. That means that the opponent has to track it down another five, six yards. Tough play. There are eight teams left in the Davis Cup competition for 89. You're watching two of them, Germany and Czechoslovakia, or one match all. Boris Becker beat Novacek. And Milan Schreiber of Czechoslovakia beat Karl Uwe Steve. Yugoslavia leads Spain, playing in Yugoslavia two matches to nothing. this weekend as well. Mats Wielander lost to Horst Skoff. They're one game, one match apiece. Love 30. Sorry, that's only his second ace. No, I can't. Four double faults. Can't ignore so. it. Thirty all. When you get that confident, you can try those shots. Normally, McEnroe wouldn't give that a shot, but. Um, the way he's played today, he just had the ball on a string, so he said, well, let me try this one. A new one in the repertoire. Just missed it. Game point for Noah. I think Fred has watched Noah serve that he should have been going for more on his first serve because that three-quarter pace there doesn't work against Mike. He's too tough on the return. And I 
judge. Uh, and uh, Roscoe, you may address yourself to this, that this court may be a little slower than the hard courts that they play on because Noah has just not been able to serve aces against McEnroe today. Well, I think one of the problems he's been having is that the, the big serve that he's tried to hit to the forehand, predominantly he's been missing. That's the serve he's been having trouble on, so Max stands over there looking for backhands. Just like that, he had, a, he had a great serve, but Max standing over there waiting on it. And when you get a great player waiting on the serve, knowing exactly what it's going to be, he's going to hit a great return. What was supposed to be a close match has turned into a rough 41 winners for McEnroe. Noah has 15, and he has break point to go ahead 5 love in the third set. Max standing there getting that ball right in the center of the racket. He knows exactly where that serve is going to be. By rights, as good a serve as that was, John McEnroe should be reaching at least for it. So, because just by this here width of the court, he can't be covering both serves. So he's giving him that one out wide to the forehand every time. He played at his best, though. He returned serve from inside that baseline area, didn't he? He was moving forward all the time, and I think that's what's helped him. Look at this. Mm -hmm. He's made the area that he has to cover smaller. Wide. Another break point. down here for no he started out losing to Woodford in Australia in five sets in the first round he got to the semi-finals he lost to Hlasek of Switzerland in Rotterdam in Milan Ziva Junovic beat him but at Indian Wells he got to the final losing to Machir in five sets and then at the Lipton you remember this he lost a big semi-final match to Thomas Muster game of the match so far and uh, strangely enough it's to try and get Yannick Noah on the board in the third set absolutely struggling struggling for dear life at the moment that up there and they believe that it was better done behind closed doors so they uh, did that with Captain Tom Gorman. That's right, Gorman got them together and uh, as you said they patched it up. Measured the passing shots, served brilliantly. It's the first easy ball that we've 
we've seen McEnroe in this in this match. He's really much on the high volley. Six points in the first set on serve, three in the second, and three so far, or four so far in this third set. Point of the match. Doesn't look like it. No. Doesn't look like it here either. 30 15. Look at that. Well, I mean, his game depends on his serve, doesn't it? And he served so well today. Started out and uh, it wasn't that good, but uh, look and see how things have got better. 48 percent of the first set, then 74 and 7. And you can't get better than that, especially when you serve like McEnroe does. I mean, three, three out of four is a very good number. Five games to one in the third set. Now, Max Bielander, for example, or Jimmy Connors, as McEnroe's folks look on, and Tom Gorman as well. They will serve in the... 75 to 80 percent range regularly, but the fact is that neither one of their serves has a kind of telling power that McEnroe does, so it's much more important for him. Noah serving 1 5 third set. With the players staying back in the next match, of course, Andre Agassi he doesn't come into the net too much. He will to shake hands and pick up the check nine times out of ten. But these two have got in the first chance that they have got all match long. John is just camping out, waiting for the backhand serve or the backhand return. Uh, Yannick's hitting so many balls there almost exclusively now that uh, when, when uh, Yannick hits the ball to the, to the forehand side, it's wide open, but um, I think Yannick's a little bit despondent at the moment and doesn't know what to do, and John is just uh, hitting the shots whatever he wants to at will. His favorite serve, too, I know. He likes to serve it into the backhand side. Like that. <laughs> Three match points for McEnroe. done everything that you could have asked him today he's just been sensational and he's wanted crowd participation he's got it they've really shown great appreciation for his artistic ability today and uh, i think everybody expected a lot closer match than this serve into the body that time from noah you know he will serve to the right hander forehand because as I said from a directional standpoint that's where he likes to go it, it suits the rotation of his shoulders and his ball toss match point third time for Macron. I think you heard you Roscoe <laughs> he changed the serve direction here <laughs> he has moved it around a little bit I think it may be a little bit too late to do that 
but uh, he did try a few different serves. I think finally he relaxed and just started thinking a little bit. Also He's stayed back on the first point. We haven't seen that all match. Changed the, tried to change the whole rhythm around. Four points in a row for Noah. See, he served a couple balls out wide to, to Max Forehand. Then all of a sudden he hits a serve that really wasn't as good as some of the other serves he's been hitting. But Matt got that return from behind the baseline. So it does help when you mix the serve up a little bit so that the guy's not waiting on the ball. That was one huge serve just then. He put everything he had into that ball. It sounded like a gun going off down here. He uses all eight cylinders. He can generate a few MPHs. Game point. Again, being very aggressive. And uh, Yannick Noah with a good second serve. There's the short ball. McEnroe jumps into that one right on the line and makes for an easy smash. But Yannick Noah may have pulled a muscle there. He pulled up rather lame at the end of that point. First serve. He's only been able to get 50% or just a fraction below 50% of first serves in throughout this match and that's not good enough against McEnroe today. Say the crowd is into this match, and I know you can hardly hear yourself think. Fourth match point. It was supposed to be a tough match for John McEnroe, but it wasn't. He easily beat Yannick Noah in straight sets. The USA leads it one to nothing. Performance from Yannick Noah as it was an outstanding effort by John McEnroe, who wins it easily in straight sets, and he's at courtside with Roscoe Tanner. Roscoe? Well, I'm here with John McEnroe, who has just given us a display that I haven't seen in a long time, but it's great to see you back. Thank you. You know, I was a little tentative at the start. You know, the butterflies were in my stomach, and uh, once I got that break at 4-3, everything just started clicking in, and uh, I felt like I was really able to take advantage of a second serve, and I knew that if I could hurt him on his serve, that uh, he'd start to get a little down on himself, and uh, then my serve picked up my game, and it just, everything went well. Well, we noticed in the second and third sets, you were serving about 74, 75% first serves in. And not only that, you were hitting both corners. 
Well, I felt like I mixed up my serve really well, but uh, when you play indoors, you don't have to deal with the wind and the sun, so uh, there's really not much of an excuse to at least serve 65%, so I figured if I could do that and just mix it up, keep him guessing, because I, I saw early on that he was going to try to hit my serve, and I knew if I just hit a corner that he wouldn't be able to do much with it, but he was going to continue to try to do it. And then all of a sudden, he'd suddenly start chipping the ball. So it was sort of, he wasn't doing much in between. So I sort of saw that early on, and I figured if I could mix up my serve, then he'd just get down on himself. Like, after he lost the first and second sets, I was able to break him right away. Yeah, well, every time he was looking for a backhand, you served him a forehand back and forth. It was great to see. Now, on his serve, you really seemed to handle it easily. Well, I just felt like I was picking up his serve pretty well. I felt like uh, he wasn't getting quite as good as uh, pop on it as he would have liked. He hit some huge serves, and, you know, I just had to deal with that and not worry about it. But I found that he wasn't hitting his first serve as well as uh, I think he would have hoped. And uh, his second serve, I knew if I stepped in and was aggressive that I could hurt him on that. And early on, after I played a couple tentative games on his serve, I realized that I had to start coming forward a little more and make him hit better volleys because basically he's a great retriever, but he doesn't do that much with his volley. And I figured if I was able to force him to hit a better volley that he'd start feel a little more pressure and maybe make some mistakes. Well, I think it was terrific, and it was great for me to watch it. brought back some memories from the old days. Yeah. So it was great to see, and congratulations, and you've really set the, set the stage for some great momentum for the United States. Well, I hope that Andre, you know, gets, gets right into it and that, uh, you know, we can put this away before I have to play a fifth match. <laughs> okay, congratulations. Great match. Back to you, Cliff. Thank you, Roscoe. Boy, you're talking to a man who's playing superb tennis, and apparently he knows it, and that's what counts, because when you're playing well and the other players feel that you're playing well, Fred, it makes a heck of a difference. Confidence, isn't it? Unbelievable, Cliff, and it, as you mentioned, the big serve plays such a great point. He lost 13 points in three sets. Now, that's unbelievable in Davis Cup players, serving at 74, 75% of first serves. So the USA is leading in this five series matches. Davis Cup, of course, is best of five. Coming up next, Henri Lacant will play Andre Agassi of the United States in match number two of those five matches. Sports Center will be up next. John McEnroe, though, has put the USA up in this Davis Cup series by one match to nothing. John McEnroe against Yannick Noah, having won the first two sets. And, well, he sailed through the third. McEnroe over Yannick Noah, who is expecting a match. Or well, McEnroe was, it would be a lot tougher than it turned out to be. Why Tatum is excited about it. Captain Foreman and Mr. and Mrs. McEnroe all thrilled with John's performance here in San Diego at the San Diego Sports Arena. up by one match to nothing. San Diego Sports Arena, nowhere as you can see, beaten by McEnroe easily. He only won eight games in that match, and then Henri Lacan beaten by Agassi, 6-1, 6-2, 4-6, six, and six games to one. Tomorrow, the doubles, and that could clinch it for the USA if, and it's a big if because the French have played very well in doubles. They haven't lost one in 12 outings. Noah and Lacan will play for the French, or will they, against Black and Seguso of the USA. For the fiery one, Fred Stolle, and at courtside, Roscoe Tanner, I'm Cliff Drysdale. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for the doubles and then on Sunday for the reverse singles of the Davis Cup. Good night. And we had a chance to sit down with him and take a look at the John McEnroe in some detail. I think you'll find it interesting. The changes in John McEnroe's personal life have made a profound effect on his professional career, he says. Well, it's helped me a lot as a person. It made me look at things in a totally different perspective. But uh, I think now it's actually starting to help me on the tennis court, too. I'm starting to get a feel for the right approach as far as the juggling act of uh, responsibility of a family as well as trying to uh, play my best tennis. And I think it's coming along nicely now.
The real test to see if McEnroe is back may take place at what is for him tennis's most important showcase, the Davis Cup. When I grew up as a kid, Davis Cup was always the most important thing to my family. They always wanted me to get a college scholarship and play Davis Cup. There was no en any sort of individual goals that they wanted for me. There's nothing like that feeling when you finally get between the lines and are able to hear the game USA. That's really what it's all about, and also to unabashedly root for teammates. It's very, very seldom, except the Davis Cup, that you're able to do that. McEnroe is the most successful American Davis Cup player of all time with a 37-8 singles record. He helped the U.S. win the Cup in 81, and it was instrumental in keeping it in American hands in 82, beating Yannick Noah in that match. Perhaps his greatest Davis Cup victory was a six-hour, 20-minute marathon against Sweden's Mats Wielander in a quarterfinal round match in 82 in St. Louis. McEnroe became tennis's most charismatic and closely followed personality. Plus, McEnroe was the world's top-ranked player for four years. His bad boy image, though, turned a lot of people off. But now he's making a solid effort to climb back to the top, both in the rankings and in the hearts of the fans. But it wasn't always that way. Sometimes people are better able to understand and appreciate you after you've gone through some difficult times. And you're also better able to understand and appreciate yourself. And the combination of that, along with family, age, ma maturing, and sort of a renewed lease on tennis as far as enjoying it, have all caused people to see me in a more positive light. What, I, the, uh, what I'm giving out is more positive, so what they're giving out is more positive. It's a give and take. His match against Ivan Lendl last month in the WCT Finals at Dallas may have signaled the true return of the old McEnroe. McEnroe is the only player in the world to beat the world's number one this year. He went on to win in Dallas. He won two tournaments in a row, in fact. But ultimately, more important than any trophy he can win in the game of tennis, McEnroe has learned, well, maybe he has, that there are bigger trophies in life, trophies that he has worked so hard to gain. been two stories when you discussed John McEnroe, haven't there? It's the on-court story, Fred, and then there's what we got to see a little of there, was the off-court story. Let's address that first. He made an effort just a couple of years ago to say, I'm a new man on the court. I've, I've had enough of, of the way that I've behaved all these years, and he has succeeded, I think. I think he's done a pretty good job at it, Cliff. Uh, going back to the Australian Open that our viewers saw on ESPN, I think the match that he played against Aaron Cricks then was played on outside court, and uh, some bad calls, but he went about his business, and then he got shellacked in the next match with uh, Ivan Lendl. Uh, just questioned a couple of calls, but that's the best we tennis we've seen from Lendl. But I think he has tried, and I think it's helped his tennis. And there's more to it than that, because what has really turned things around for him, really, is his on-court effort. The guy is serving very well now. And that is what has made a big difference to his results on court this year. It is John McEnroe in our next match, and he will play against Henri Lacan de France. The USA have won the Davis Cup against France. We are in the semi-final of the 1989 Davis Cup competition. We'll be back. We'll play against John McEnroe in the fifth match of this Davis Cup tie between the USA and France earlier today, Hilton Head Island. Well, it was just sprint.
just seen will set up for you what you will see in July. It was going to be again West Germany playing against the USA. John McEnroe and Becker will have a, another confrontation, Fred. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great one, Cliff. Uh, they've got Boris Becker in there again, but Eric Yalen played in Hartford. Whether he'll play again, that's a question mark because Carl Louis Steves played some pretty good tennis for them. Well, Roscoe Tennis to the court side. I wonder, uh, Roscoe, if you can look ahead also and give us some thoughts on what may happen in that Davis Cup tie between the U.S. and West Germany coming up. A lot of emotion going on that, in that match because you have the flag incident from Hartford, all the different things that went on in that match, and, and uh, you've got Agassi and McEnroe both keyed up. The whole team is really ready for that match. I'm sure that they would just as soon play it this coming week, the way they're playing. But um, Steve, he did his job and uh, over in, against uh, Czechoslovakia, so, and he's just beaten Andre Agassi. Uh, so I think Agassi certainly knows who he is now. Matter of fact, uh, just before we got the results of that match and before Agassi played today, he came over and asked, how did Steve do today? So he certainly knows that name now. <laughs> and and uh, he's not going to be looking past past that match. And that's going to be a big match for us. I, I think we, we have the edge. Uh, we have the edge in doubles, McEnroe. Is a toss-up with Becker, and, and he has the edge, and then and Agassi, I think, should be in an edge. But so, we have the edge to win that match, but I think it's very, very tight, and it's played in Germany. So, I think it's going to be tough, Cliff. Well, the match that you are watching along with us was supposed also to be a very tight one, Fred. What do you think about what Roscoe said about the next one? I agree with Roscoe. I think a lot depends on the surface, Cliff. It's going to be indoors, but, uh, of course, uh, clay courts are the European specialty, but uh, Becker's not really comfortable on clay courts, so I think they'll go for something a little bit quicker, and I think they'll probably select this surface. If you had your druthers, Fred, what would you pick? I'd pick this surface because I think it suits all of them. I think a uh, very even match, and I think that the Americans, because of the doubles, I think we have the experience there, and I think they may creep through that one. Well, that, of course, will take place in July. This is here and now. This is San Diego. Live coverage of the Davis Cup. United States versus France. John McEnroe will play against Henri Lacant of France in the fifth match. The USA leads it by four matches to love. We'll be back with the Lacant-McEnroe match. Lacant of France. We'll play against John McEnroe of the USA in this, this match. It will be a best of three set. He's 25, born in Lille, as you see. He, he spends a lot of time now in Geneva as well. Lacant, four or five years ago, I think was one of the greatest stroke makers in the game. Uh, they uh, tested him and sort of made comparisons to the great Australian Rod Laver because he just had the flair for the sport, the natural ability and go for broke style that of the two-time grand slam champion rod laver however he's been very very erratic over the past few years and uh, you really never know and as the american boys said going into this tie it depended on which Henri leconte showed up <laughs> he, he looks like one of those guys out of the movies with the sword scaramouche or one of them doesn't he the dashing figure of a man and he's playing against john McEnroe of the usa who also in his own way a dashing figure of a guy and he's made an unbelievable comeback there as I said not only in terms of his on court ability but his his off court demeanor as well I think one thing that, that has helped him Cliff is he's taken time off after uh, WCT finals and got himself said he said he now has to really respect the fact that he's 30 years of age and uh, he's got to look forward to getting his body in shape uh, when you're young you can go out there and you can do that day after day he said now he's got a stretch he's got a trainer with him that helps out and uh, I, I think that's made a big difference to the concentration factor the intense intensity that he carries with him now onto the court who we thought would win this match between Lacant and McEnroe. Let's see, we think the McEnroe's got a better serve. And a bit of net game. Back when we talked about the ground strokes, that was a little closer, but we still went with him. Looks like it's all McEnroe, and that's pretty much how we think this match, at least I do anyway, will turn out. What do you think, Oscar? Well, I think on, on almost every category, John is stronger, just like we were thinking. But if if a hot Pierre Lacan or Henri Lacan shows up today, uh, he can be even in every category. He's dangerous. In, in spurts, he's equal to anybody, as we saw those five games he played against Andre Agassi. 
So I think, you know, whatever happens today, you're going to see flashes of brilliance from Lacan. But overall, McEnroe has the edge. Roscoe's a courtside. He's about, uh, you know, he can take three or four steps and he would be able to shake hands with the players. He has a very good view, different kind of perspective, and really has the opportunity to see things that clearly from here and to hear things that we're not in a position to hear. It's been fun listening to his comments. Tom Gorman is the U.S. Davis Cup captain, of course. And the reason for the slight delay is that uh, John McEnroe has just left the court, uh, gone back to the locker room. And uh, so that should be a couple of minutes delay. He's got permission from George Grimes, and that's Tom Gorman there. Now, Fred, I heard that he had a foot problem, and, uh, that he had hurt his foot in some way. So we've got a match that is going to go on now. It's between Henri Lacan on the court, as you see the officials talking. And this young man, who reminds you, doesn't he, of a younger Michael Chang. The crowd are loving it. And look at him. Or how about a, a younger Andre Agassi? Look at this kid, he can't miss. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Quite remarkable, young fellow. Henri's having a little fun with it, but you just wait for about 10 years. Henri's not yeah. going to be quite as much of fun, I'm this sure. This kid doesn't want to go now. This is the biggest crowd this young fellow's played in front of. <laughs> Look at that move on the volley. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. You know, Cliff, this is actually reminiscent of Andre Agassi when we used to play in Las Vegas at the Allen King tournament. They'd bring Andre out, and he was just about that height, and he'd jump up and hit overheads for the crowd. You see McEnroe coming back. I was thinking exactly the same thing, Roscoe. And, you know, we even have a, <laughs> an interview with him on record from those days when he was just a, well, just a kid of about this age and height, as you said. Can't fault him, can you, Fred? No, I'll tell you what, the hang around here for another 10 years and this kid's going to be around playing some tournaments. <laughs> well, John McEnroe is now back on court. Yeah, but he's not going to... He doesn't want to go. How the heck with that? I want to stay out here. I'm having fun. <laughs> this uh, Henri Lacan is fun to play with, he says. Hey, those are pretty pictures. You know, I got to tell you what, in 10 years' time, we're going to come back and we're going to have these on file, these pictures. We're going to say, remember the kid? That's right. The yep. same man. Yeah, and Henri Leconte's going to go up and shake hands with him. Look at that. Terrific. And he's giving him a racket. Oh, that's a nice gesture. Henri Leconte has given the young fellow one of his rackets. He's saying, you want it back? No. <laughs> And he says, I need the ball. He gave him the racket. He says, we've got six balls out here. against Henri Lacan of France in the set number five, or match number five rather, the USA have already got an insurmountable four matches to nothing lead in this Davis Cup tie. We're in the semi-finals against West Germany. That match will be played in July here on ESPN. McEnroe serving the first game of this best of three set match. John McEnroe, he actually was laughing at the call.
opening match against Yannick Noah, it took uh, John McEnroe quite a bit of time to get on track on serve. First 15 or 20 points on serve were not very good. And then Serve. He finished up in second and third sets, serving at 74-75%. But today here started off very quickly. Remember this name now, Ryan Redondo. He's six years old. He's from San Diego, and that's the man you saw playing before McEnroe came out. shocked with the power with there's Ryan right there right. John was a little shocked with the uh, power with which Henri hit that return he had a good serve and ball came back like a rocket yeah. Another one. yeah same thing again Tennis coming your way on ESPN this year. The Bash and Lam Championships from Amelia Island starting Thursday through Sunday. Oh! And of course, the French Championships, the U.S. Clay Court Championships, and in latter stages of the year, our continuing coverage of the Davis Cup. a good start here, second game of the match. And one game to go. to see playing tennis before we came on with this match with John McEnroe and Lacan, Ryan Redondo, told you about him well. Oscar Tennis corralled him. You're going to get a chance to hear him as well to see him. Well, I'm looking forward to that. He's sitting there next to Oscar. I bet he's looking at the picture of himself on Oscar's monitor. He's an interesting guy. I wonder whether he read the caption underneath, future U.S. Open champion. <laughs>
back in a row, two games to low. More of the same from him, um, Roscoe, as you look at uh, the most Davis Cup singles and doubles wins combination. 53 for McEnroe. Looks a little dejected there. He's <coughs> slapped at a few forehands and missed them. <laughs> Fred, they criticize. Uh, Lacan in France for playing sometimes what they call unintelligent tennis as you see this replay here. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, it's I wouldn't call it intelligent. I think it's flashy tennis and uh, he is a colorful sort of fellow. I really don't think he thinks too well on the court. He just goes for broke with shots. I don't think he ever plays percentage tennis. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not what do you think, Roscoe? I think he certainly goes for it any chance he gets. Uh, Ryan said that he likes that style of play himself. So as far as the advice I'm getting from Ryan is to keep going for the shots. He likes to hit it hard. But I think that um, Henri sometimes does it to extremes where he doesn't give himself a real chance to get the ball in. I think that's the main criticism of him. Game point for McEnroe. When we come back, you'll hear from page six, Ryan Redondo and Roscoe Tanner. McEnroe, three low. First set. Oh, good eye. Who was just on the court? I played with a racquetball. Hmm? I played with a racquetball. Oh, you played with a racquetball racket? What's your favorite shot? I can record it. You like to hit the ground strokes. Who's your favorite player here this weekend? All the French people. All the French people. Yannick Noah, one of your favorites? You have fun. They're nice guys, aren't they? Yeah. It's too bad they didn't win this time, but maybe next time. Right? <laughs> okay. Ryan's father, by the way, is a Frenchman, so that might account for his, what he was saying. What do you think, Fritz? Look at the racket work and the follow through with his firm wrist. <laughs> I think this is tremendous for a six year old. Look at that. He doesn't drop the head of the racket, keeps it up. And as he said, he started off with a racquetball racket. And that's the way to teach the youngsters to start with. And, and that's going to be a pretty heavy racket for him because that's Henri Leconte's racket. You may remember the name of Marie de Redondo, that Ryan's mother, John Bobbsey. Jean-Baptiste jean Pro is his father. Played Davis Cup, actually, for France. Mm. <laughs> Talking about a talented player, Jean-Baptiste is incredibly talented. Might try anything at any time. Similar to Leconte. Exactly. This is McEnroe and Henri Leconte playing in the fifth match of this five-match Davis Cup tie series. USA lead it four to nothing, so the best that the French can hope for is to salvage one point. McEnroe is going to have a lot to say about that because he looks as though he's all business out there. Very proud of playing Davis Cup. surprising because a year ago the US was trying to find its way back into the world group of the Davis Cup which is the final 16 nations in the competition and going into this event everybody was saying this is going to be a very close call didn't turn out that way Uh, a year ago, Cliff, uh, there, 
was some speculation whether this man was going to play Davis Cup again because he'd, he'd taken a sabbatical. He was off the tour. He didn't know whether he was going to come back or how long he was going to come back for. Tom Gorman up having an argument there with Dick Lumber.